Fritzing parts fast. Connectors, metadata and checking fritzing parts for production. If we right click edit our fritzing part, currently we have our breadboard, our schematic, our PCB and icon. So next we'll tackle the connectors. First we have the number of connectors we want. It's safer to start and mod a fritzing part with the same number of pins as your part. So I already have 100 pins, like my part. On a side note, some people want to add extra connector pins to make tutorials, like this programming header. But the problem with that is they must only be active in breadboard view, not schematic or PCB. If it's showed in PCB, the manufactured part will be wrong. Making parts with active pins in only one view is beyond this beginning tutorial. Basically, you have to code the internal FZP file. So you'll have to search a forum for how to do that. You can save all this mucking around just sit wires on pins for a tutorial, because most people won't notice. All my pins are through hole, so I have the global through hole ticked. Through hole and SND has the final say on what layer a pad is on, with through hole on both sides and SND only on one side. Next is global genders and is male, female and pad. These would be male and these would be female, and that gender setting makes the pin indicator colours red for male and no colour for female. Pads I assume is something like this. If you have a mixture of genders you wouldn't tick these global boxes, but the individual pin gender boxes. All my pins are male, and since Fritzing default ticks all the male pin boxes, my genders are already done. Next we have pin names. If your part has specific names for pins, the usual procedure is to change the pin names to match, so that when you hover over pin, it will show that specific name. But if you've already got every specific pin name in text next to every pin in every view, I would skip that step and not change them. It's actually quicker reading straight off the drawing rather than waiting for the hover to appear. You can also change pin names and gender in any view. Next is metadata. First we come to title. If it's a common part with a lot of different specific part numbers, you would make it a generic part. As an example, if it's an op-amp in DIP8, you would just call it an op-amp and let other people edit their own specific part number onto it. Most generic stuff has already been done, so you probably won't run into that. Other than that, you would punch in the official part name. If it's common, you could also add what it does, i.e. LM358, op-amp. We have title, author and description. Descriptions are usually copied and pasted off the data sheet, but you don't have to be that fancy. Next is a label, and that's the usual standard reference letters for a part. That's like R for resistors and D for diodes. Numbers get incremented automatically when you bring a part into a view. The default for these modules is the word part. I can type in the word part or I can just leave it blank and it defaults the word part. Next is URL and that's just a link to the manufacturer's data sheet. Next is family and that's if you want to group it with similar stuff. As an example, if you make a part and put it in the LED family, you'll be able to change it in inspector with the other properties. Like I made a bunch of rectangular LEDs and I put it in the LED family. But I changed the package property labels to its size. And that means I can grab a standard LED and go to its package in Inspector and select my rectangular LEDs. Then select a different property in that package group, like its colour. Variant you don't have to worry about, because Fritzing advances it one every time a part is made from another part, so there's never a duplicate. Next is Properties. You can delete properties here, add property groups here, and add the specific variant here. If you're unsure what properties you need to put in, just find something similar and right click edit it. Then go into metadata and copy what they have. And lastly we have the search tags. My part is in a great example, so we'll look at this LM358. We start with the part name, then what it actually does. Next is the package and its footprint. Sometimes you search for the footprint, so you can use someone else's drawing in your part. Then it's whatever general term you can think of that'll help people find this part. Lastly we can go to one of the uncluttered views, like PCB. And if you've got pins with the same names that are connected, you can set internal connections. Then just connect those pins with wires. The part is now finished, so we'll save that. I'll save this as a new part. If you get an error message, just save it again. Then straight away save the bin, so if it crashes you won't lose it. Now it's a matter of testing the part in FritzSync to make sure everything works properly. We grab our part and drag it in, and we have to check every pin in every view to make sure it's working. We can check it by connecting a wire to every pin, but the quick way is to grab the part and drag it onto the breadboard and make sure every pin lights up green. These pins are lighting up because they're connected internally. Then grab it and check the next row of pins. This test is also checking if the part snaps the grid properly and if the pins are on a 100th hour pitch. Notice how the support pins aren't active and don't turn green. Schematic view is a lot harder because you have to connect a wire to every pin, offset the other part and then check the wires are attached to the tips. And our part is snapping to the grid correctly. PCB view is the same wire test. And when we check our support pins, they work as we expect. Fritzing usually snaps to an end pin, but it's a bit fickle on which end pin. It could be this pin, this pin or even this pin. So go to view, set grid size and make it something coarse like 50 thou. Then grab your part and snap it and then grab the other part and snap it. My wires are vertical so it must be snapping correctly. You can check internal connections by clicking on a pin and make sure all the connected ones light up. If you tested in other views and the correct pins don't light up, you probably have the pin numbering wrong in those SVGs. 
Next we check the fritzing outputs and specifically the PCB view. And the quick way is to print it on a piece of paper and put the part on it. So it's file and export. And the proper way is to print the Gerbers because that's what the manufacturer sees. But if you want to risk the accuracy of a standard print, just go export as image. I usually go for PDF because it seems more accurate. Save that and then open the PDF file. Then it's file and print. And one thing you have to check is that there's no scaling, so it's actual size. Then it's just print it. Put the page on something soft. Line up your board with the pins. Then push down really hard and try to penetrate the paper. At this point you can see if your board matches the silkscreen box. Then it's just a matter of seeing if your perforated pin holes match the drawing. This print the PCB design and check with parts is the standard procedure before you send any PCB design to a manufacturer because it catches the errors that waste time and money. Next is the more correct but longer method and it's file, export, for production but extended Gerber. Then it's make a folder and save it. Open a Gerber viewer, I use the free Gerber V. Then it's file and open layers. Open your folder and box select the files. Open those and then select layers. First we toggle the drill holes to make sure they exist. It's easy to draw what appears to be a hole in the SVG but doesn't actually make a drill hole. You can check it directly by opening the drill.txt file. The first thing we see is group T100 has a drill diameter of 39 thou. And if we look at the individual holes in the T100 group, these are the XY coordinates. You can crunch the numbers, I did it in Excel, to make sure they are right. But toggling them in a Gerber viewer should be enough proof they exist. Of course their accuracy is dependent on how accurately they were drawn in the SVG in the first place. Next you would just turn off everything then turn stuff on and off to make sure they'll actually be made. These blue dots show the copper top will be etched. These yellow ones are copper bottom and they look okay. Then just keep clicking to check whatever you like. You can also check dimensions by clicking the measure button. Click on a point and then drag it to another point. Then just read it off the bottom down here. It's reads 2.4 inches. You can change units with this box over here. That's about it for Gerber checking, but there is one final check you can do and that's with the part checking script. You can download the part checker from here but it's in Python, so you have to set all that up. It's easier just to post it on the forum and let the experts fix it for you. All you have to do is upload the FZP file with this seventh button here. Here we get a reply with errors, and a lot of it is semantics, like these first two. This breadboard not putting out a proper SVG is a problem, and it looks like the pasted in logos. And this is the Inkscape to Fritzing drawing problem, where Inkscape can't draw to a format that Fritzing likes. I can't draw logos, so it's easier just to delete the thing. Next is schematic view does not need 8 ground pins. Technically this is correct. And the way to do it is stack all the pins on top of each other and give the other 7 zero stroke and no fill. Next is schematic view pins need to be 100 thou instead of the 200 thou I used. This is an out of date stipulation that can be ignored. 100 thou pins look ok on small parts but they are wildly disproportionate on big parts. Basically they look weird. Fritzing itself uses 200 thou on its own generic ICs. These small ICs would look better with 100 thou pins, but that's just the way Fritzing does it. And lastly is some header pins not being active in breadboard view. This was covered earlier, and how to fudge around it, but I don't want the debug header active. That covers the trials and tribulations of making Fritzing parts.